Uh, I am Varunya Khan. I make videos about whatever the fuck I want to. In this one, I will be um, pretty much doing a like a haul video. I never thought I'd do a haul video um, because you usually see them being done about like makeup and clothes and stuff. But honestly, I don't buy myself either of those things particularly often. Something I do buy often music. The CDs um, shown in this video will uh, all have been pretty much bought for a set that I was going to perform at Ragnarok. Oh, I should probably explain. I am a DJ where I live. Goth, metal, rock and alternative punk and all the adjacents. I, I'm a DJ and I DJ uh, using CDs. Uh, I always have. I was taught on CDs. It's kind of becoming an obsolete thing now to DJ on CDs from what I can tell. I don't really care. I like using them. That said, I always bought digital copies and would uh, write them onto CDs because I never have collected anything really before. The only thing I have close to a collection is my band shirts and I needed to have some CDs for Ragnarok and I've recently moved into a place that I'm assuming I'm going to live in for more than one or two years, which is my norm, which is why I've gotten used to not holding on to a whole lot of material possessions. I um, haven't spent more than a couple of years in any house my entire life, so now I'm like, fuck it, I, I intend on being here for at least a few years. It's my own space, I'd signed the lease, uh, there's not gonna be any, oh shit, I've gotta leave within a week surprises, as has happened before, hopefully. So I figured, fuck it, I might as well make a proper uh, original CD collection, because I've never really had the space or the place to do so before, or the money to, because uh, buying original CDs, like proper CDs, can be a little bit expensive. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I've explained to you that I'm now collecting physical CDs as opposed to digital ones because I want to and as I've mentioned before on this channel I have memory issues it will absolutely help me not forget bands um, having them in my house uh, to look at because you know like being someone really into music you come across so many bands and it's very easy when you're listening to thousands of bands to forget a whole lot of them so yeah I'm gonna try and make an effort to you know make sure I've got a physical of at least the ones that um either can come in handy for me for work or that I just really, really, really don't ever want to fucking forget. A lot of these are very work-specific CDs. You'll notice that a lot of them are kind of what would be considered entry-level. It's good to have a collection of those kind of like really popular bands. When you're a DJ, uh, especially for requests, you don't want to be in a situation where someone's like requested five different things that you don't have. Personally, I hate taking song requests, but I will take band requests because there is a likelihood that I have the band, not necessarily a likelihood that I have the song. Anyway, who's messaging me? Don't message me. Making a video. Uh, I feel like I should shut the fuck up. Not really, I feel like I should continue talking but about the CDs as opposed to whatever else. So uh, all, the CD all the physical CDs that I'm going to show you I got from JB Hi-Fi. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I don't know if they have them outside of Australia. They are like a media and entertainment kind of thing. They have games, CDs, movies, sound equipment, sound tech, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes they have instruments even. I've seen them have like an electric drum kit before. Speakers, earphones, laptops, you know. All that kind of stuff. It's a big like tech and media kind of place. And there's one uh, within about 10 minutes walk from where I live. So I was like, fuck it, I'll just get all of my fucking CDs. Like my first little lot of CDs to start my collection from there. And considering I had, as I explained, Ragnarok coming up, this was two months ago, I'll let you know, I got these CDs a long time ago, just getting around to making a video now because of who I am as a person. But yeah, I figured, uh, yep, good little collection, get them from JB Hi-Fi, easy done. Didn't want to bother too much with delivery or anything like that. Otherwise, I probably would have gotten a lot more off uh, direct from direct merch online, but I didn't. Or from like Bandcamp, like the physical CDs you can buy through Bandcamp. There are some on this CD list that I did buy through Bandcamp that I'll mention at the end, but all the physical ones I got from JB Hi-Fi. Anyway, shall we get on to the fucking CDs that I have so many of? Not all of them. Second pile. Ooh, oh, God. Ugh. Let's ignore that happened. 
Because there are over 20 of these fucking CDs, 19 physical CDs, 5 uh, digital band camp bought ones, because there are over 20 of them, I am not going to go into details too much about any of them because this video will end up over an hour. And I, want, I really want to get it out tomorrow because I was meant to do this fucking thing two months ago. <laughs> so let's, let's see how we go with me not talking too much. First off is... Um, Megadeth. Megadeth's greatest hits, I should say. So obviously this is going to be really useful for my DJing. A lot of people like Megadeth, a lot of people request Megadeth, and most of the things that people request from Megadeth are going to be on their greatest hits album. I do like Megadeth more than I like Metallica, in fact. Ah. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to start this. People are going to get mad at me. Yeah, so it's got, you know, Holy Wars, Peace Cells, Sweating Bullets. All of these do pretty fucking well at any given uh, metal club, which is what Ragnarok is. Did I explain what Ragnarok is? Ragnarok's a metal club. Yeah, Symphony of Destruction. Can't go wrong with Megadeth's greatest hits. Next one is uh, Cattle Decapitation's Death Atlas. And as you may have noticed, probably not because of my hair and vest, I'm wearing a Cattle Decapitation shirt right now. Fun fact, this is actually a 5XL shirt, and the only reason it doesn't look like that is because I've got the denim vest on. Maybe at the end of the video I'll give you like a little bit of proof that this is actually way too fucking big for me, but I like that. I always intend on um, like buying like really big shirts and then altering them into my own dresses or something like that. No, it doesn't end up happening, ever. Maybe I'll make a video of it one day. Me failing at trying to DIY clothing because I'm fucking terrible at it. Yes, anyway, Kettle Decapitation, Death Atlas. Um, so this is a relatively new album. When did this come out? I can't see, and it doesn't show. That's annoying, I think it came out like a couple of years ago. It's pretty rock solid. I Okay, you see people shitting on it because People like to shit on cattle deca new cattle decapitation because apparently it's too Corey, but whatever. I don't fucking care. I thought the album was good, and obviously I did. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have a cattle decapitation shirt. Anyway, I promised I wouldn't talk too much about them. Good album. Next one is Tools. Uh, Anima. Anima. You know I don't. Anima. I'm gonna say Anima, but it's got like the um. Can't remember what it's called now. It's Anima. It's Anima, is it? Anima. What's it mean? It's got that in the title. I am a big, big Tool fan. I mean, okay, I was. When I was a teenager, I was a big, big Tool fan. I haven't actually listened to heaps of them recently, but whatever I do, it's a good, pretty, pretty good time. Um, the reason that I got that album is because it's got one of my favourite songs by them on it, which is H. I don't really play that at clubs particularly often because it's quite a slow, kind of emotional song. And, you know, usually I try to keep shit jumpy and dancey and headbangy when I'm DJing because that's mostly what people go to clubs for. I should have put these in fucking order, shouldn't I? Next one is Body Counts Bloodlust. I was tossing up between getting Bloodlust and Carnival, but I ended up getting Bloodlust because I had been binging these two songs off of it and the time that Ragnarok was meant to happen was around the time that it would have been a year anniversary since the George Floyd stuff and I wanted to uh, do a little tribute to him, like by just playing a song that kind of fitted the devastating situation that that whole fucking thing was. So I was um, considering playing No Lives Matter or Black Hoodie for obvious reasons and didn't get to, obviously, because this didn't go down. I do really like the Ski Mask way as well. Actually, a lot of the songs on this are really, really good. I completely slept on Body Count for like years, I don't know why. I think I always kind of assumed that they would be, uh, like that they would not sound the way that they do. No, I kind of thought they would sound this way. I just kind of thought it wouldn't be very good because a lot of the like, sort of artists that sound like this can be really cringe, but they're not somehow. Nice one. And they've got like a few um, collaborators on here as well. They got Ms. Mustard Stain, they got Max uh, Cavalera, they've got Randy Blythe, cool stuff. So, Sacred Reich. Um, I was, I think I was intending to play Death Valley. I could check it, but I can't be fucked right now. Yeah, Sacred Reich was quite cool. I, I don't know, if you're into kind of uh, freshish kind of stuff, then you probably like them. This is uh, Awakening by them, by, by the way, the album name. Next up, uh, another band that I kind of slept on for ages, but not out of thinking that they would be bad. 
but out of not being able to stand the people who were fans of them. Does anybody else ever get that? Like, you just you just can't listen to something because people don't shut the fuck up about it. Like, I was that way about Rick and Morty for years. I, I refused to watch it because people did not shut the fuck up about it. And then I watched it and I'm like, hey, it's quite good. So Trivium, not a lot of their stuff I do like, but I did end up listening to this album, The Sin and the Sentence, and finding a few of the songs on it pretty fucking dope, and honestly they're in regular rotation for me at the moment. Those songs being um, Beyond Oblivion and uh, The Revanchist or The Revanchist. I They say it like Revanchist or Revanchist, but I don't know actually how to say the word. I think that this is a really, really, really good album if you, like me, uh, had not really gotten super into them because there are a lot of songs that kind of have some of that, like, just that sort of sound that made me, like, when I did listen to them years ago, think I wasn't going to like the band at all. But those two songs kind of turned me. Yeah, I'd say give it a shot if you want to give it a shot. If you don't want to give it a shot, don't have to listen to fucking anything you don't want to. And that's fucking facts. Next up, Decapitated. Yay! Where you at, bitch? Decapitated anti-cult. So a lot of the CDs that I got were based on availability. Um, this was, I wanted to have Decapitated in the set, and this was an album that was available, and I'm glad because it's a um, really decent album. Yeah, I think uh, Kill the Cult was very good, One Night Nation was very good. Give it a listen if you feel like it. Estimen. No, testament. So there's this story about one of T's friends having a, a misprinted testament shirt from maybe a dodgy seller or something like that that just said estimate and I think that that's beautiful. Was it a dodgy print or was it just like a weirdly set on him or something? I have lost the will to live. Um, anyway, so this is testament. I was Tossing up between getting uh, a best of or greatest hits kind of CD and not doing that. Uh, and I decided against it. I decided to go for Brotherhood of the Snake, uh, on which I can suggest uh, The Pale King. It's probably my favourite because I consider myself a Pale King. I'm kidding. Not really. Yeah, I really, really do enjoy uh, most of this album, uh, but The Pale King stood out to me uh, quite a bit. Next is an brace to call me a fucking poser. Disturbed. Specifically, Indestructible by Disturbed. I had not listened to Disturbed until this year, since like 2012 maybe. I think I was quite into them when I was an early teen, uh, and then maybe like latest mid-teen. Nah. Nah, early teen, so it would have been more like 2011, 2010. In maybe earlier? I don't know. Showing my age here or lack thereof. <laughs> I had not listened to them in ages, I think, because like, I went through a huge metal elitism phase when I was like in my late teens, like mid to late teens, um, and I kind of just convinced myself that I didn't like them at all. And also, like, Disturbed, I feel like, isn't a band that you like are in love with your entire life, usually. I think, like, even now, after like re listening getting into them like again in a big way this year, uh, thanks to Tristan. Getting in, into them in a big way and really, really specifically remembering how good the songs off of Indestructible are. Like after a few months I did kind of back off it a little bit again, but you know, fuck it, guilty pleasures are bullshit. So it was nice to kind of reconnect with this uh, like super nostalgic uh, band that I was quite into as an early teen. Songs I would suggest off of the album are uh, Indestructible, obviously. Um, I would suggest Enough and I would suggest Inside the Fire. But, you know, a lot of good songs on here. Ones I listen to the most is probably Indestructible, I think. That or Enough. Anywho. Next up, uh, Napalm Death, uh, which has a long fucking name, Throws of Something. Uh, throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism. So I'm not gonna remember that. Oh my god, I did not know. I have not even fucking opened this CD because I haven't had a chance to fuck with it yet. And there's a fucking crack in it. That sucks. No, look. I don't even see the crack. That's alright. I'll live. 
Anywho, uh, yeah, Napalm Death, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism. Did I get that right? Yes, bitch! Um, so, great album. Napalm Death, uh, generally, a uh, really dope band. I really like what they're about. Pretty uh, environment conscious, I'd say, uh, as you can tell by like all of their lyrics. Same, similar with uh, Cattle Decapitation who are more uh, kind of swayed on the side of uh, like animal rights and ethical consumption, blah, 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 blah. I really like both of those messages. I try to employ them in my life a little bit where I can. And uh, that's a story for another time. Uh, Good album. (laughs) Next up is uh, actually an Australian band, as I came to find out. Did not know that first time that I listened to them. Uh, But then again, this is metal. It's not exactly like your... um, got an ear out for accents. The band is Aversion's Crown, Um, and the album name is Hell Will Come For Us All. Honestly, not uh, hugely into any of the cores, but as far as they go, I find myself closer in uh, enjoyment to Deathcore, which is what this band is. It's got some really fucking solid songs on here. What was the song that I was going to play at Ragnarok? Scourge of Violence, right. Sorry, this was like a couple of months ago uh, since I planned out that kind of set. I don't always plan them out completely, but I like to have a rough idea of what I'm going to do. Yeah, Scourge of Violence, uh, the Virgin's Crown Australian band. Check them out uh, if you like Deathcore and uh, that sort of vibe. For someone who doesn't like Deathcore, I find them relatively enjoyable. Why did my fucking voice crack? What am I prepubescent. So, another uh, nostalgic uh, from the younger years band that uh, people (laughs) would definitely not consider metal and would likely consider poser-esque, but party animals get it. Limp Bizkit. Um, So, look, vast majority of Limp Bizkit songs, not a fan. However, if you try and tell me that you're not going to get down to Roland at 2.30am in a metal club, don't know if I want to know you, to be honest. I mean, look, I'm only kind of kidding, um, but nah, my generation, Roland, like a few, like a good few of these, uh, like just bangers. This is an old uh, classic uh, in regard to like new metal and that kind of stuff. So important that I have it in my repertoire. <laughs> Next up, oh my god, I love this band so much. At the Gates. Uh, At the Gates is. Uh, Flippin' classic um, death metal band. Um, death metal is one of my favorite metals. <laughs> cool. Um, death metal is one of my favorite genres of metal. So this was released like 2018. That's like three years ago. If you're into death metal, you probably already know these guys. If you're wanting to get into death metal, give them a shot. Here is an old uh, favorite band of mine. Uh, as you saw before, I mentioned liking Tool, so it might not be any surprise to you guys that I am also a fan of A Perfect Circle. Uh, This is essentially uh, Greatest Hits, but it's called uh, 360 as an album, but it is a, it's it's a hits album. It's got uh, The Outsider, it's got uh, Weak and Powerless, it's got Counting Bodies Like Sheep, it's got a bunch of songs I can play at the club, and a bunch of songs that I really, really like. I think it doesn't have passive though, if it had passive, it does, it has passive, don't worry, I was just, being fucking stupid. Yeah, perfect, great, love a perfect circle. Yeah, perfect circle's 360, and that's what that's about. Next we've got Havoc. Uh, if you are into kind of thrash, uh, you are likely already know about Havoc. Uh, this is a relatively recent album called Conformicide. Uh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, like, kind of fun, like, kind of got some like sweet grooving in there. Um, like the bass work, I recall being fairly uh, cool to listen to. I can't remember what I was going to play. I feel like I feel like I was going to play Hang 'Em High, but I could be wrong. Yeah, just give him a shot. Check it out. So if you've been on my channel for any longer than like six to nine months, you would know that I am a fan of Van Halen. I made a whole video about the death of Eddie Van Halen last year. One that actually recently a friend of mine who is also a YouTuber shared because that didn't get very much attention that video and that's fine i just wanted to say what i wanted to say about it but i remember like suddenly getting like not a large amount of views but kind of random amount for me and it was like what's going on and it turned out my buddy doug here 
shared my video on his channel. So thank you very much for that, my friend. I appreciate it. Anyway, uh, pretty much there's just a lot to say. I'm a Van Halen fan, so obviously I got a Van Halen CD. Um, I did have a Van Halen CD when I was a teenager. As I said earlier in this video, though, I have moved so many times in my life. I do not have pretty much anything from when I was a child or a teenager. I think uh, there are some photo albums out somewhere. Uh, that's probably the only thing that I've got. Yes, so uh, this is a best of. This is a two CD CD. Double, double, double. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not even going to try to say what I was going to say then. Mm -hmm. So it's got bunch of bunch of bangers and obviously it's uh, named after uh, one of their tracks so yeah it's got fucking ain't talk about love fucking love that song so much um poffer teacher pound cake jump um unchained why can't this be love probably one of my favorite songs by them run on with the devil just dance the night away yeah look honestly this is just fucking amazing and it's got the iconic artwork um that you see uh, on Eddie's infamous guitar and a bunch of stuff. Like that's like the kind of Van Halen artwork. It's really, really very cool. Um, so obviously I had to have this in my CD collection, my physical CD collection. Definitely more for pleasure than for work. However, I do play Van Halen at uh, metal clubs sometimes because even though it's not technically metal, it's rock. Who the fuck doesn't like Who the fuck doesn't like Van Halen? Nobody I want to know. Anyway, next, another fucking super important uh, band to me as a teenager, uh, System of a Down, and their album Mesmerize. So Mesmerize is my fucking favorite System of a Down album. System of a Down is a band that I was obsessed with as a teenager and still listen to really frequently. It was the first time I'd heard kind of like Eastern uh, kind of tunage in a like metal setting, uh, which uh, someone of my background was very cool to see, like different timing, different kind of just a vibe that I hadn't seen in metal before. I'm sure it had been done, I just had never heard it and was very, very uh, happy when I found them and I've been obsessed ever since. Not a band I ever grew out of. Actually, at uh, where I work, uh, every now and then uh, we'll like play System of a Down really loudly during clothes when everyone's gone just so we can smash out the clothes. <laughs> uh, it's a really fun time, we end up losing our voices. Yeah, so some of my favourite songs off of this album, um, pretty much all of them because it's my favourite album by them. Um, I could listen to it, like I know it word for word, top to bottom, the whole album. Um, but Sigaro is obviously hilarious, radio video, uh, violent pornography, pretty much everything on this fucking album is really, really good. Anyway, yes, uh, you, any person knows of System of Down, I don't need to explain them to you any uh, further. Next up is classic Judas Priest. Um, so this is the Essentials, so that's um, like, you know, like another best of album. I use, I I really, really enjoy playing Judas Priest at metal clubs. I uh, enjoy listening to them. I saw them live a few years ago. Fucking amazing. How? You've been around for fucking ages. How are you still good live? What? I guess being around for ages you would be, but you know, you'd think that you'd kind of slip a little bit. Then again, Alice Cooper hasn't. Alice Cooper's still amazing live. Anyway, I'm going on and on. Yeah, it's got like heaps of like the classics it's got breaking the law it's got a uh, jawbreaker it's got turbo lover it's got ram it down painkiller you know come on come on come on judas priest got it uh last but not least i got a necessity for a metal club uh rob zombie um there's always always an alternative uh girl sometimes guys mostly girls, who will come up, ask for Rob Zombie, and I very much, very much look forward to obliging every single time because people get the fuck down to Rob Zombie. People get the fuck down to Rob Zombie. People go to clubs, they hear Rob Zombie, they dirty dance with each other. It's great. Everyone's great. It's all about drinking and fucking. Come on, get amongst it. 
That is actually all of them. Well, all of the physical CDs. Uh, however, there are more. <laughs> this video is getting really long now. I think it's like 45 minutes of recording. Hopefully I can get this to like less than 20 minutes because I don't want to make you guys sit down and look at my face for too long. Those are all the physical CDs that I bought. I did buy, in that same time frame, five uh, digi CDs from uh, Bandcamp. Uh, did, like did, did you, I mean like digital, like you can download their, uh, their music after you've bought it. Um, so I'm not going to go and talk too much about uh, those ones, but four of them are Australian bands and one of them is not. Evile is the one that is not. We've got Hell Unleashed uh, by Evile because somebody requested um, that they really wanted Evile. None of the uh, JB Hi-Fi's or any actual CD stores in Melbourne at the time had it because it had just been unle unleashed. It had been released just then. Um, so no where had it uh, at that point in time. And I really wanted it because I needed it in a, within like a couple of weeks and I didn't want to risk buying it from overseas. So I just got it on Bandcamp. Yes, so Evile, Hell Unleashed, and the other four are Australian bands. Uh, Iscarion, they are a Melbourne band. I got Pillars of the Faith. Um, from them. Uh, Scarion is my mate Johnny's band. Um, they're very, very cool. Uh, death metal-y. Um, ah, okay, apparently they consider themselves thrash and heavy with influences from death and black. And Odious from uh, Brisbane. I got their album The Immortal One. I also got uh, Idle Ruin. Um, they're also from Brisbane. It's a self-titled album called Idle Ruin. Uh, they might be the one with the new uh, album actually. Um, I got uh, Odious and Idle Ruin uh, to use their songs, two of their songs for that vlog that I did when I went to Brisbane recently and saw them both live at Odinfest. Um, if you've not watched that video, um, I'll put it somewhere. Yes, so Odious, Idle Ruin, Evile, Iscarion, and the last one is Carthos. Uh, I don't know how to say it exactly, but it's another one of my friend's bands. Um, they're another Melbourne band. Um, and they released a self-titled demo uh, a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, uh, worth listening to. Support local if you can, very good stuff. Um, so yeah, those are the ones I got off Bandcamp. Um, every album that I mention in this video I will uh, list in the description, um, but that's all of them. I've got two more CD haul videos coming up. Um, in the next uh, week or two. The next one is not gonna be anywhere near as long as this one, I promise you, because it's only gonna be like four CDs. Um, so I can probably go into them a little bit more and um, you don't have to sit there for fucking uh, 20 minutes or more, hopefully it's not more, listening to me uh, go on to me ranty tangents. Thank you giveaway video will be coming in a couple of weeks uh, because of a milestone that we just hit. If you didn't notice it, then Good. Wait for that video. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like me, you like the video as usual. If you've got any uh, uh, thing to say about any of the albums, if you love them or hate them or whatever, um, let me know. We are in another lockdown, so I've been like trying really hard not to just buy fucking everything. I did just buy a friend's album. It hasn't been shipped yet. It's actually by two bands. I feel like I should make a video about it because it's really. It's a funny album. Anyway, yeah, two bands I have friends in, Melbourne bands, very good. Yeah, let me know whatever the fuck you want to say in the comments, bro, or don't. It's all good. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, what am I, that fucking Hodge twins? Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you would like. See you in a couple days. I didn't have one goddamn drink of my coffee this whole time. Oh, do you want proof that I'm wearing a 5XL shirt? I've got proof. I actually don't know what's coming up on the thing. It's massive. I love it. I wear it to, I wear it to bed all the time. I wear it around the house. That's what I do with all my like super oversized shirts uh, that I have never gotten around to altering. I just like wear them at home all the fucking time. <laughs> Very comfortable. Wear them with trackies. Beautiful. God damn it. I'm kind of like annoyed that the video is over now because I really like my makeup. Aww. Poor me. Poor me. Can you, like, can you even tell? I feel like that's how white it goes. I feel like I should like be in the early 2000s.
or something, like going to a concert in the early 2000s, you know, when everyone was wearing like baggy fucking everything. Anyway, I talk too much, don't I?